So for this video, we're, we're doing something a little bit different. We're featuring an article that was not published in Journal of Supply Chain Management um, and an editorial, but they're both very important to researchers in supply chain management, so we are sharing this with the supply chain community. So Eric, why don't you start by telling us about your paper? Yes, um, first of all, it's uh, I think an honor to, uh, to be featured here. Um, we're talking here about an article published in the Journal of Purchasing and Supply Management together with an uh, editorial in, uh, in JPSM and um, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here also because the support from the Journal of Supply Chain Management has been uh, huge um, so um, yeah happy to sit here and talk about the article. Now um, this is not the ordinary research paper that we're talking about um, this is a paper that looks at uh, the reuse of data across multiple publications so that's also uh, why the article has the title uh, Déjà Lu, <laughs> I've read this before, <laughs> and um, maybe that's also a nice uh, link to how this article came about, because it was actually quite coincidental that uh, I was reading a paper um, and I thought, oh this looks very much like uh, something I've read before, and uh, looked at the method section and then discovered that indeed uh, the, the, uh, the method section was quite similar to to earlier papers and that's how this whole thing came about. I in the end identified uh, 12 papers uh, and then in the end two cases of 12 papers each using the same uh, data set. Now before we go any further uh, I think an important statement to make is that I have nothing against reusing data. Um, I think uh, it's a huge effort to collect data so uh, there could be very good reasons to use data or multiple papers. The only thing is about how to do it right and that's also what this article is about. Yes. Moving to the future, how can we make sure that if we use data across multiple publications that we don't make mistakes in doing that? Yes and so Eric and I have had many conversations about this idea of when, where's the line and when is it too too much where you're you're basically slicing and dicing up data a data set and you're get, you're not making any incremental contribution so Eric's paper when he wrote it he's come up with 18 problematic practices that really are key to our field and our discipline of of operations and supply chain management we have to potentially not set the record straight but we really do have to set some guidelines so we know where we can draw that line in the sand and say this is just too much we're we're mining too much and it gets to the point of really malpractice malpractice in our field of uh, as being an academic so so along with Eric's article we've written Louise Knight and I have written an editorial that talks about quality and integrity and and we really have aligned it to to this idea of what is malpractice and what does it mean why do people actually participate in this this idea of we have to get as many papers out of one data set as possible and Eric mentioned the fact that it's very time intensive we understand gathering of data is super important and we can't just get one data set one paper that that really is probably not the not the best use of our time so so we think about what is too much and how can we set some guidelines to move forward and say you know too much is the point where you're actually duplicating uh, you're duplicating constructs you're duplicating and potentially taking constructs and simply reusing them changing the names of them so so Eric identified a number of these issues where yes that is too much so so the idea behind malpractice is why do we why do we do it? What drives people to do it? We've heard of many business situations such as Enron. Why would those people participate in such a thing where they, they actually are at doing the wrong thing ethically? So we need to have some sort of standard and we know why we do it because the demands on this this idea behind publish or perish is just, it, it, it's getting to be 
very, very difficult to be successful and to get those promotions that we need, but you have to be very, very careful on how you go about doing that. And as reviewers, as authors, as editors, as associate editors of these journals, Journal of Purchasing and Supply Management, Journal of Supply Chain Management, we need to set those guidelines so people understand what it is that we're looking for and to ensure that what we're looking for is it, we're, these authors are doing the wrong thing and we don't want to go on some sort of witch hunt and figure out you know clean up the existing record what we want to do is move forward and ensure that that this we can set some standards working with other editors of um, operations and supply chain management journals to set standards so that we're following the same rules. So that's my perspective. I think this is a very important issue. We are sitting here today at the Academy of Management Conference, and I can assure you on the, on the um, docket, this topic is being discussed in many, many different venues at many different, different journals. Yeah. And to tie into that, if, if possible, um, I think there are two reasons why it's appropriate that we're here at the Academy of Management uh, 2018. Um, first of all, there's a, a big initiative from the Academy to drive responsible research in business and management, RRBM. And, and one of the, 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 the key uh, points made also in the statement about uh, responsible research in business and management is that it has to remain credible what we do. And I think one of the problems with uh, uh, slicing and dicing is that at some point it doesn't become credible anymore, uh, the, the 12th paper, the 13th paper. So I think that's an important one. And you were referring to uh, different sessions where this is uh, being brought up. Yesterday I was at uh, a session that was about using data across multiple publications and uh, listening to the panel and, and to the, the audience participating. I think there were three main points made. Um, of course, every paper should make a distinct contribution. So uh, that becomes harder and harder if you mine a data set uh, uh, too much. The second one, the second point that was made is transparency. Make sure as an author, you're transparent in your cover letter to the editor. You acknowledge earlier papers that have been written about the same data, but you also should be transparent to the readers. So it should also be clear in the paper itself and how this paper is related to earlier publications. And the third point that was being made is it should be accumulation of knowledge. So you cannot write at a tenth paper as if the first nine didn't exist. You should build upon the earlier knowledge, even if it comes from the same database. So I think these were three very important points being made in that session. And it was actually interesting because I was with Eric in, in that session, because this is an important issue. And they, they developed a way or they have a way basically where you can present your data and say here is here are the four other papers where this has been used here was the research question here were the constructs so be be transparent when you're submitting your articles then that way it actually makes us easier to see what that contribution is even if it's incremental contribution that's okay but let us know what what exists with these data sets so that then we can take the responsibility and if we have decided that that there is enough incremental contribution it's not on the author's shoulders anymore now it's the editors of the journal who have said hey this is okay we believe that that you're doing the right thing and you're performing good research 